Hi, welcome to Roy's Book Reviews. Um, today I want to share my thoughts with you on the novel Timeline by Michael Crichton. Um, if you happen to hear some faint drumming in the background during this video, um, it is because my daughter is currently up in the attic uh, practicing with her band Veil. I highly suggest you check them out um, when you have the time on whatever streaming music service um, you like to use. They're pretty good. I happen to have excellent taste in music as well as books, so um, you should trust me on this. Um, but this here is my book review um, channel, and I'm going to get into it about the novel Timeline, um, which is a time travel um, book. I believe it was published in like 1999, um, give or take a year. Um, therefore, the technology um, referenced is not, you know, up to date. Um, I'm sure if people were really using cell phones back then, they're certainly not using them in this book. Um, but when you're talking about uh, time travel fiction, um, I suppose it doesn't really matter all that much whether it came out in 1999 or back when H.G. Wells um, published his time travel book because the technology is imaginary, so it's all about um, what the author imagines and what the reader envisions rather than um, what the actual technology um, in existence at that time happens to be. Uh, once time travel is actually a real thing, um, then we'll revisit that theory. Um, so for me, time travel, or for me, timeline, um, was a time travel reading experience. Um, by that I mean that once upon a time, that time being the 1980s and 90s, uh, Michael Crichton was one of my go-to authors. But it's been decades um, since I last read anything by him. As I reflect back on my earliest adult reading days, um, I recognize that I tended to be drawn to big shot bestseller authors. Throughout high school and then college, where I majored in English at NYU, the books I read for scholastic purposes were classics from the literary canon, mostly dead white men. Um, for my leisure reading, I gravitated to household name hotshots of the publishing industry. These authors presumably made out quite well for themselves, um, since we're talking about an era prior to cable television, incredibly realistic video games, and the internet. Um, or if the internet was around, it was in its very early stage anyway. Um, same thing with the cable. Um, this was a period when books were pretty high up. Um, on the entertainment hierarchy. And prolific authors of the most popular ones were selling a great many copies. Ebooks hadn't been invented yet. Audiobooks, to my knowledge, were not super popular yet. So print was king. And reading ink on paper was a leisure activity with far less competition uh, than is currently the case here in 2023. As with the classics from English classes, though, uh, I still tended to end up reading novels by white men, um, but they were still alive and cranking out new titles seemingly as quick as I could read them. In my regular rotation were books of um, authors like Sidney Sheldon, who was a favorite author of both my mother and myself, so it will always have a place near and dear in my uh, reading heart. Uh, Robin Cook... Stephen King, Joseph Wambau, Howard Robbins, who um, was rather naughty um, for me at the time, pretty sexy stuff there, and Michael Crichton. Um, I took a pass on Danielle Steele and Jackie Collins, thinking that their books would not contain enough testosterone for my taste. As I grew older, I started pulling away um, from blockbusters comprising the majority of my reads and gravitated more towards literary fiction. Um, it tends to sell slightly fewer copies. Um, this isn't to say that I read only literary fiction these days. 
um, are only non-genre books. Um, life is too short to confine oneself to a single section of the bookstore or a library, in my opinion. So I read a little bit of many types of literature. I know there are many people out there, perhaps some of you listening to um, this video, who are specialists and, you know, only read one or two types of um, categories of book. Um, if that's your thing, so be it. It is not mine. Um, some books will be literary fiction. Um, some will fall neatly into a genre. Um, some of the books I read will end up a top bestseller list. Some will be books that fail to make the authors rich and famous. Of course, these days, if your name isn't J.K. Rowling or James Patterson or a small handful of other extremely privileged authors, chances are that you aren't splitting time between multiple mansions, but merely living a comfortable existence when not putting yourself through the hell of the writing process. Reading has not quite become a lost art, but when the phone in your hands is capable of providing such a wide ver variety of amusements, the book has its work cut out for it to grab um, ever shorter attention spans. Of the authors I used to return to book after book back in the day, Stephen King is the one um, that I have read um, relatively recent. Um, 112263 is a fantastic book um, that I highly recommend. I re reviewed in um, another video here. Um, that was probably the last Stephen, Cook, Stephen King book um, that I read. And it was definitely in the last um, five years or so. Um, another author from back then who stood the test of time is John Irving. He was you know, not really one of the blockbuster books. He was, I guess the early literary fiction writers that I got into. Um, but the others uh, remained in my rearview mirror. The Michael Crichton books I enjoyed when wearing a younger man's clothes were Jurassic Park, Congo, and Rising Sun. And there were more Crichton stories that I skipped reading and went straight to the movie because they pretty much made a movie out of everything he wrote. Timeline is one of his books that, unsurprisingly, was made into a film, one I have not seen yet. Uh, the man had the Midas touch when it came to addictive storytelling. Unfortunately, I cannot say that I particularly enjoy Timeline. It's about a small group of historians who end up being able to study the past in an unexpected way when they are sent back into it. I won't bother trying to describe the pseudoscience that a fictional tech company has secretly developed, except to say that it involves the multiverse in a way much less weird than everything, everywhere, all at once, uh, plus the once miraculous seeming and now rather quaint activity of yesterday or co yesteryear called faxing. Um, basically, you are faxed into another universe and another time. Um, the characters in Timeline are too unmemorable um, to bother naming or describing. Su suffice it to say that they go back to the 1300s to bring back a member of their team who preceded them and didn't return. Once they're zapped to the distant past, the rest of the narrative is basically a drawn out action sequence. For page after page, the protagonists are either being chased or else involved in a sword fight before going back to running for their lives. Meanwhile, in the present, the time travel technology is damaged in an accident. Technicians race to fix it in time to bring the historians back, if they survive their adventure, um, into the modern world um, where they belong. I was not on the edge of my seat. Uh, for the most part, but towards the end, you know, got a little um, dicey and I was, you know, hoping for whatever it was I was hoping for, I guess that they would make it back. Um, but I wasn't all that invested. In large part, um, this was because I didn't really care about any of the characters. As for the guy in charge of the technology company, of course, he's a greedy jerk 
who is far less interested in who happens to live or die uh, than in eventually monetizing the miracle machine. Uh, bringing the past, specifically ferocious dinosaurs who roam the earth, into the present intrigued me as a premise in Jurassic Park uh, much more than did bringing people from the present into the past, um, as takes place in timeline. In large part, um, that's because dinosaurs are really cool. Um, so a book that provides them is way cooler than one which does not. Um, but another part of the equation is that I am not the same reader that I used to be. Had I read Timeline around the same time um, as when I read other Crichton books, along with um, blockbuster page turners in the 80s and 90s, by authors like um, Sidney Sheldon and Robin Cook and others that I mentioned, um, would I have enjoyed it considerably more than the 2023 version of myself? Maybe. Probably. Or maybe I should stick with uh, my current go-to author of blockbusters, uh, Dan Brown. Um, some writing ages better than others. I picked Timeline up at a bookstore. Um, that I visited while um, on vacation uh, on Long Beach Island. And upon seeing Crichton's name on the book cover, a wave of nostalgia urged me to take a trip back in time with him. Timeline didn't um, do it for me, but your own reading experience uh, may differ. If I ever watched the movie, I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh, one of the infrequent occasions where I prefer the film to the novel version, since it is such a visual story. The book does feature a scattering of drawings um, throughout to help readers visualize uh, the setting, uh, mostly drawings of castles, um, for what it's worth. Um, if time travel is one of your favorite tropes, Timeline may be a book for you. But if you want my time travel story recommendation, I would suggest reading Octavia Butler's Kindred, or rewatching um, Back to the Future instead. Um, the former finally made it to the screen recently, um, and the latter is now on Broadway. Go figure. What a time. Um, so that's all I have to say about Timeline, about Michael Crichton, about reading then, reading now, all sorts of stuff. Um, until next time, this is Roy of Roy's Book Reviews, wishing you happy reading. <laughs>